Hello everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of Ubic Technologies Incorporated. We are a digital asset and blockchain company. I'm also the community manager of the Ubic blockchain and uh, a holder of the Ubic cryptocurrency. My background is in machine automation and redundant safety systems. And part of our reputable team of professional, professionals, um, we have skill sets that include uh, multi-blockchain services for exchanges and explorers. We do token-backed debit cards. We have uh, some prototypes for carbon credits and infrastructure tracking. Uh, we're working on tradable mortgages and bonds. And we've also had a lot of interest lately from hedge funds and tokenized venture capital. So what is a user on the blockchain? A user is essentially just a big random number that can be generated a number of different ways. You can roll dice, you can shuffle a deck of cards, but in most cases you would use something like uh, the Fusion Wallet, or we have uh, another product of um, a biometric authenticator. So what it does is take 13 different points from your fingerprint, randomizes it with other data, and all from the device, it's able to sign transactions and contracts. So these accounts are essentially your digital signature. And, and once a transaction is signed um, and transmitted to the network, it's then relayed to all the other nodes and confirmed on the blockchain. So we are using this device for secure access. So generating um, secure passwords for banking services, as well as logging when those services are being accessed by sending a small transaction and having the permanent record of it on the blockchain. So how does machine learning relate to blockchains? Well, you wouldn't build a complex AI within your blockchain. It's far too expensive, slow, and it's kind of redundant for a super secure system like a blockchain. But they have something in common. Both machine learning and blockchains require uh, the same infrastructure, uh, GPUs or graphics cards, to uh, crunch complex math and algorithms and uh, basically perform work, whatever the task is. For a blockchain, the work is rather standardized. We have an artificially hard math problem that can be adjusted based on the amount of demand to ensure that the, the math problem is solved at a consistent rate. So what we've learned at the conference today, uh, a lot of systems do require this hardware, but it, a lot of it isn't used um, consistently for machine learning practice. It's kind of an on-demand service. So you have this hardware that's outdated almost the second you buy it, and a majority of the time it's sitting unused. You know, you might spend some of the time looking for the cutest cat on the internet, but then get the occasional job looking for, uh, for load balancing and efficiencies and something like the power grid or other infrastructure. So both of those tasks are very subjective, and in terms of the value, they can be uh, discovering. So what I propose is you run a blockchain which could be used as a redundant system for your AI. You could run your own blockchain, but the services that uh, our public chain provides allow for much more of your resources to actually be used for AI and machine learning practices. The public chain is permissionless, it's immutable, and it's self-sustaining. And any data that you record to it is stored with fail-safe redundancy. So switching to and from uh, mm, proof of work for the blockchain, you're able to benefit from having standardized work 
and in turn be paid in a currency that can log and record whatever results you have for your artificial intelligence. Now, how would AI store data on the blockchain? There's many different ways. We can store basic raw numbers or encrypted. Or you can choose to do more unique things like uh, tokens. The, the network is really good at establishing and transferring tokens. We have many tokens already on the network. First off is UBQ, which is the reward for doing basic proof of work. We also have Quark, uh, a multi-million dollar currency with over 6,000 fully KYC users. We also have Loot, which is a perfect example of something like subjective proof of work, where you don't really know how much work you have to do to find the value. So we have uh, a rather difficult puzzle that one of our community members made. And we back the token hidden within the puzzle with uh, a mining card, which could be used for artificial intelligence or machine learning practices, and a number of other components you need to build it. The real interesting thing here is how smart contracts can be used to safely use machine learning and artificial intelligence within our daily lives. With a smart contract, you have the options for multi-signatures, multi-keys, multi-party accounts, so you can have full control over an AI through this smart contract system. Uh, we have other possible interactions like reputation-based decisions, time-driven events like locking, sending, and expiry. And all of these conditions are the same for every blockchain user. No AI, no machine learning, and no user has an unfair advantage uh, as the numbers are too large for anyone to be able to cheat. So an example of this would be you would have an AI maybe analyze your infrastructure, like the power grid, suggest changes and improvements, where to put new loads, where to uh, invest in new equipment, and eventually it could uh, suggest the solutions to you, you would have to then sign off on the actual dispensement of funds and uh, the AI can then track that it's only going to approved vendors, all with the power of smart contracts. So if you'd like to learn more about UBQ and UBIC or UBIC Technologies Incorporated, you can check out at UbicSmart on Twitter, ubicsmart.com, or if you'd like to take your hand at the uh, puzzle, you can go to our blog, The Ubic Report on Medium. Some of the questions we had from the conference was, what are the main differences from a similar platform called Ethereum? Our goals are very similar, but more refined to Ethereum's. Uh, we have uh, their stable code base running right now, and uh, we are going to monitor new improvements and only add them after we see a thorough vetting. Our business goals are much more refined as well, with uh, not wanting to decentralize all the things, but Let's succeed by not failing. Uh, another question was, how do you scale as more GPUs go on the network? And currently our operating costs are rather low. Uh, we are only 
offering 7% inflation of new coins to miners, and that will decrease over time over the next eight years. This is our current plan, but it is not the only one. Going forward, what products are we taking to market? As I mentioned, we have the secure access device, but we are looking at tokenized venture capital uh, as a very close second. And uh, we have many other ones that we are currently exploring and building the prototypes for with, with our partners. Our goals are essentially to help build permission solutions on a permissionless platform. And I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation today. I'm Alex Sterk, and thank you.